Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to chat about Aiden and his miniature cockle. Um, I did a post the other week saying how it had been eight years ago since Aiden had caught miniature cockle, and a lot of people were wondering how and what signs we had and things like that. So I'm going to go through what happened with us from the best memory I can because it was eight years ago and it's a little bit dazed here and there. Um, also, I am no medical expert. So please, 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 if you think, like, or if you're watching this thinking, oh, has my baby got miniature cockle? Please go to the hospital, don't watch me, if that makes sense. So eight years ago, 2010, I was studying my nursing and I was at my nursing placement at our local hospital, which was Gosford Hospital. I um, had Aiden in school pretty much full time so I could go to placement. And one, it was around lunchtime, his preschool rang me and I still remember the conversation and she was on the phone and she said, I'm sorry Mel, but he's not sick. He hasn't got a temperature. He hasn't got... Um, there's nothing to really say he's sick, but she's, he's just not like his normal Aiden self. So Aiden had been at that preschool for quite a long time. So I knew that his teachers knew him. And that's one of the biggest things with a preschool. I think if your teachers know your child well enough to be able to ring a parent to just off a hunch, then that's the kind of school you want to send your kids to. So I said to them, okay, well, I'll, I'll leave my work placement and I got in the car and I went to the school to pick up Aiden and that was at I probably got there about two-ish I would say and I had rang a doctor on the way I don't know why I rang a doctor because like I had said earlier there was no real signs of him being sick so I rang a doctor and got into our doctor surgery and we I picked up Aiden from school. He had been sleeping on the couch and didn't have his lunch. And I got him up and I said, all right, do you want to go to the toilet before we go home? So he would have been three. He was three at the time. Four. Maybe he was four at the time. Um, well, three turning four. And he, yeah, actually he was. He was just three turning four, sorry mind blank um i told him to get up i took him to the toilet and he just vomited in like where they wash their hands and i was like Ugh, okay so cleaned it all up put him in the car i took him straight to the doctor and by this stage i don't know how i can say this but the doctor had done everything right there was nothing that the doctor had done wrong because at this stage, the doctor had checked his temp, his chest, his skin, everything that he could possibly do. And he just said to me, I think it's a virus and I think you should just go home and give him Panadol. And if the Panadol doesn't hold his temperature, then give him Nurofen. And so I took him home and it was about, I don't know, five o'clock that night. Nolan and I were sitting there and we had just ordered pizza. And Aiden was sitting, like he was just slumped in his chair and he just, he had really good vocabulary, but he couldn't talk to us properly. He was like, ugh, ugh, like weird talking and his temperature would go up to like 39 degrees, but then dramatically drop down to 35 and then go back up, down and up and down. And then, um... I felt his heart rate and his heart rate was going super fast and I I had training to be an, I was training to be a nurse but for the life of me I could not figure out what I was meant to do. I was just stuck and I was scared and I just I I ummed and ahed because I was like, well, I shouldn't it's just a virus so he should be fine and then I'm like, no Mel, you know he needs to go to hospital. And then I just kept going back and forth in my head. So I rang my mother-in-law and she said, no, you should probably go to the hospital. And I still was like, okay, yep, no, we're going. We have to go. We packed up his stuff. We lived at the entrance at the time. 
and made the drive to Gosford Hospital, which wasn't that far. It was only about half an hour, but in that half an hour, he had just declined again. And then we got to the emergency department and he was like just limp in Nolan's arms and we got him into the, the nurses and handed him over and they're like, what's going on? And, we're, and I apologized so much. Well, I'm sorry, I don't mean to waste your time, but I don't, we, I just do it. I always apologize for no reason. I didn't have to apologize, but I said, I was sorry for wasting their time. I had been to the doctor and he said it was just a virus, but um, he's just getting worse and I don't know what to do and we're scared and this is what he's like. And he was just so limp. During that like one hour period, I'd say he just rapidly declined. Um, so they took off his shirt and I'll try and put the photo down below, but you can't really see it because back then like the cameras weren't that great on our phones, but he had a rash on him. And that's when they said, no, he needs to go straight through and we need to um, get a doctor to see him straight away. And the nurse said something to me that made me sit there and just think, okay, I did the right thing. She, um, because I had apologized so much and I was so embarrassed to look stupid and I didn't want to look stupid in front of everyone because I had been training at that hospital to become a nurse and then all of a sudden I just walk in here and I felt like an idiot. But she said to me, you'll never make, like there's no such thing as stupid when it comes to your children. Like, you know your child best and you know if your child isn't being themselves. So in that time we had rang Ryan, Aiden's dad, and he was coming from his end of the coast to meet us at the hospital and Aiden had um, IV drip, um, not drip, angel cream on his hands to get ready for his IV lines. Over the next few hours he had deteriorated again in the hospital because at this stage we didn't know it was meningococcal. They just thought it was just a, a bad virus is reacting to. They were waiting for the test results to come back. Um, and they had just, from memory, they gave him a blanket dose of antibiotics. So I think it was just ampicillin and something else just to try and cover all basics. They had put him into a four bedroom room, into the children's ward. And it wasn't, we weren't, I don't think anyone was comfortable with the idea that he was in there because no one knew what was going on and you could hear the sick babies around him and all I can think was, God, I hope whatever he's got isn't contagious because I'd feel awful. We found out the next day that it was in fact meningococcal and that we had to go into an isolation room. So we were transferred into an isolation room. I then had to ring his preschool, which I felt awful for because he was at preschool previously with meningococcal. The whole entire school had to be given an antibiotic to make sure that none of them would catch the meningococcal and it would make them urinate like a bright orange red color. It was so bad. And I remember a mum coming up to me, she was like, oh, um, she was, I don't know, I felt so bad because her child had wet the bed that night and stained the mattress and I felt as though <clears throat> I was obligated to buy the child a new mattress, like, sorry, but I didn't because it's obviously, wasn't our fault. Um, the school was great and they delivered all the medication to the people and then we had to stay in the hospital for the extra, um, I think it was over a week we had to stay in for, from memory. And he only was able to stay in his room for a, I think it was like 72 hours of the um, proper antibiotic going through him. And then we could start to leave and go out to like the kids play area and that, which was much better. He was three and he was so confused and sick. He was so, so sick. I've never seen him look that sick before. I hope I'd never see anyone look that sick again. Um, and he was frustrated, I guess you could say, because he didn't want to be there. He wanted to go home. Um, and he was connected to the IV pole the whole time. So it was obviously a tiring time for all of us. It was very stressful for all of us. Um, so the signs that we had was he was lethargic. He vomited at the school. Um, 
he was confused. His heart rate went up and his temperature went up and then went back down. And um, he had a, a rash on his stomach, which had then spread further down. Um, that's what we had. So I know for a fact that even the doctors have said, you were lucky you brought him in because if you didn't, you wouldn't have woken up with a very well boy the next day or he wouldn't have woken up at all. Um, and I know how scary that sounds, but I am so, so glad that I just didn't give him another dose of Panadol and then put him to bed because he would have went to bed. He was that tired and lethargic, he would have went to bed. There's, it's not that he was up running around. I know if I had, I had sat him on the lounge next to me at dinner time and he wouldn't eat. He was so tired. So I know if I had given him another dose, which he was due shortly of Panadol and put him to bed, I wouldn't have heard from him all night and I assume I wouldn't have heard from him all night and I assume that I wouldn't have woken up with my son next to him. That's how quickly he deteriorated on us. Um, he's completely fine now. He's got no issues that we're aware of. We got it quicker than a lot of people and we got it quite quickly. So it was able to be treated and everyone around us was able to be treated um, it didn't spread. We don't know where it came from. We don't know how he got it. Um, he had had all his immunizations up to date. He even had the extra immunization for meningococcal because I was studying at the time for nursing and I knew the risk of me coming home with something were high. So we had all got our, um, his whooping cough was up to date, but he had got the extra meningococcal. I got the extra meningococcal. It's just one of those things that even though you get the immunizations, there's always that chance that you get it. So it's really, um, it's scary, but I, I thank God that he had the immunization to begin with because I can't imagine how bad he would have got it if he didn't have that. So yes, that is Aiden's story from my eyes. Not that he won't actually, he wouldn't remember it at all now but that's how we that's what happened that's yeah Aiden's life with Minish Kapoor he's completely fine now and I am going to put some links below of information and everything you can find that might be able to help you I know there's a lot of um, people out there who want to learn some more information and again I am no professional at this so I'll put all the links below um, thanks again for watching and hopefully you don't have to go through it and we'll chat to you later. Bye.